Welcome to Better Than Podcast. Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching a video version of Better Than Podcast. Um, I am your host, Lindsay Zimmerman, and today's guest is Joseph Gabby. Joseph Gabby is a numerologist, a healer, and an art therapist. Um, you can find his art therapy program, Awaken the Artist Within, um, just by searching Joseph Gabby on Facebook. Uh, we had a wonderful conversation. Um, we talked about using numerology, um, using our own personal numbers and those of our loved ones, our friends, our family, um, and maybe even our enemies to understand the complexities of our relationships, um, not just in the here and now, but also on a soul level, um, which got us into the subject of soul contracts, which I'm always ready to talk about. Um, but we also talked about more practical things such as um, understanding the four pillars and how to remove the wobble from those pillars to give you a more um, stable, balanced, um, steady life. It was a wonderful conversation. I'm so glad to have him on here. Um, I'm always happy to speak with people who um, have been doing the hard work of helping people realize their full potential. Um, and so I hope you guys enjoy this conversation. I know that I certainly did, and I hope to have Joseph back on again, maybe about halfway through 2021, just to uh, do a vibe check and uh, see how everyone's doing. Um, <clears throat> Um, please like, comment, and subscribe to the Better Than channel here on YouTube, but you can also check us out on minds.com, that's M-I-N-D-S dot com. Um, that's where I post all of the Better Than podcast stuff, but I also post essays and just other things that are unrelated to the episode and what we're doing here, um, but that I thought you guys might enjoy anyhow. So again, that's minds.com forward slash better than. I hope to see you guys there, and um, I look forward to all the fun stuff that we're going to be doing in 2021. So uh, buckle up, strap in. It's going to be a wild ride this next year. I am sure of it, and I can't wait to see you all there. Enjoy the rest of your year. Stay warm and cozy, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. No problem. So... I, I found you because I was interested in numerology and it's interesting to me that I found you right when you're kind of getting out of doing numerology and doing art therapy. I'm still into the numerology. It's not like I'm out hundred percent. I'm out maybe 80%, 85%. So I'm not putting it too much to the public. You don't see me advertise it on my, even on my website but I do a lot for my own clients, you know, who I'm working with the healing aspect of. Uh, and especially the one who finished the healing and they want to go to the next level into what they're here for, what they're supposed to be doing, where they're going to go. And this is where we narrow it down directly to the, uh, you know, and they'll, we will take, I'll take them into the levels they need to go. Uh, Numerology is a very precise, uh, if you want to call it science, if you want to call it uh, whatever you want to add for some, they, they think it is uh, woo-woo stuff even, so it doesn't matter either way uh, what somebody thinks. So, but it can be very precise into determining many facets, many aspects of our life and pinpoint it into exactly what, where somebody even being stuck in what area and they are stuck in, in what vibration they are stuck. Ah, that's it, isn't it? What vibration they're stuck in. And that vibration, each vibration determines something and those vibration on their own will awaken many different things. Now, I'm going to, to do a special coming out. I haven't announced it yet, but it's coming on Facebook soon on a special uh, 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 discounted price, even though I'm still in, um, I'm, as I said, 80, 85% of, I'm still, uh, do the, the thing is, is how to bring the numerology chart from a 3D to a 5D consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, if I don't do nothing about that, then it's like I'm I'm letting it die in me without me talking a little bit about that phase because I've been talking for 30 years in the, into the 3D dim, dim, uh, dim, uh, dimension where to help people to see them where they're stuck in their life. Now in the 5D is going to be totally different. Some people, they used to be very slow into their uh, their chart and now they are awakened into something else with the, with the 5D. And some of those, they start feeling it in them. I need to do something. I need to move. I need to, uh, but they have no idea what's happening, what energy going on. And there's something shifting in them without knowing, you know, and then I need help. I need, I don't know where to go. I need, I don't need, uh, you know, but it's like there is something uh, firing calling, inside of them. Calling to them? Calling to them. It's like, why are you sleeping? Get up and do something. Wake up, wake, wake up. up. Pay attention, you, know, you have a job to do. Yes, and, yeah. and, and when they were into the third D dimension, it's like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. It will come. What's the rush? You know, let me stay hiding. Let me play small. Let me be comfortable in my discomfort, you know. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Because it's more comfortable um, in the discomfort than to not know what's next. To be doing the right thing, but not know what's next. Because m m the many people in, into our human consciousness today, they are stuck into a level of consciousness that they've been beaten up so many times in previous lifetimes. Now, regardless if you believe in past life or not, doesn't matter, we're not gonna sit and dispute that is not important but many are coming with the baggage coming from past lifetime have been beaten up if somebody was born during the roman times as a soldier and he died suddenly and without understanding what happened that soldier will come if if not every other lifetime every uh, or every lifetime he end up into being a soldier and he keep dying because that's the collective consciousness that that soldier had unless they break it in one of those lifetimes. This is uh, when I, I, I talk about the soul agreement. Mm -hmm. Everything around us and we keep attracting it and we attract it later on in our relationships and our clients, our people that we work with. And because of all of that, it's not helping us in a way to expand. Mm -hmm. And now suddenly the 5D consciousness coming upon us and they say, hey, wake up. It's time for freedom. And get out from your security mind. Because people substitute security for freedom. You said something um, before that just like, you know, you hear things sometimes and they're just so true to you personally. And you had said that, um, you know, we don't, we don't have any need for the Akashic records anymore. That's 3D, right? No, will, you talk, I, will you talk more about that? The Akashic record, basically, it was designed for the last... 300,000 years maybe or whatever it is when we were in the 3D consciousness and it served us well at that time but if I'm moving to 5D why on earth I want to take this 3D Akashic record to the 5D when I'm already trying or not trying I'm, I'm working my bum off to get off of my backpack with all the emotions that I have I have so much emotions that that keeping me stuck. In the 5D, you cannot take those emotions with you. So how come you're gonna take the, this, uh, the Akashic record? Mm -hmm. The Akashic record is, is the one helping you to keep maintaining those experiences and feelings that keep running lifetime after lifetime, that you, they're still unfinished. 
Um, and we're also living out the um, legacy of those records. Okay. You know, that's, that's where we're at. But we, I mean, we've seen that kind of we're done with what it can serve us with, and we need to move on. We, we, we cannot keep dragging everything behind us. And we're trying to go to a new island. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. <laughs> you know, we're going to a new island. Why am I get, getting this old furniture with me? <laughs> I need... I I need that stuff that I've had in my garage for six years. I got to bring that to the new island with me. We're so silly. What? To do what? Why don't you buy new stuff? Go invent new stuff. Invent your stuff because, because your energy is, it won't accept those old energy in the new place. So you're going to be on the waiting list in the new place till you get rid of your old stuff. And so that's why a lot of us are stuck, right? Because we're oh, holding on time. to these old energies that there is no place for them in the new, in the new world, in the new dimension. And we keep going into the same loop into a catch 22 and we don't know how to get out. Mm. And it's so simple to get out. Mm -hmm. It won't take you a lifetime to get out. The old, I remember when I, 30 years ago, I was talking about the, I was talking about the 5D 30 years ago. And you I remember in that time, nobody could understand what I'm talking about. I just barely yeah. grasped it within the last 10 years. So I can't imagine what life was like for you. <laughs> it, was not, it wasn't fun. So even the spiritual community, they said, oh, it's my karma. I have a whole lifetime to, uh, to deal with it. I said, no, you don't have a whole lifetime. You have to a whole lifetime to live, but not to deal with your old crap. Could you imagine you know, that that was your goal or you thought that that's what the purpose was to just spend your lifetime working through clear your, up crap? your karma? And they keep coming back to clear up their karma again mm -hmm. because they never finish it. Um, my, my best friend, she said that the reason that I used to have such terrible luck with vehicles was because I was an abusive horse owner in my past lives. And that until I was able to resolve that with myself, that I, I was going to continue to have car problems. Yeah. And it, at first I just laughed at her, but then I really thought about it and I was like, well, I'm not that person. I'm not an abusive person today. Um, I have a, a real reverence for creatures other than myself. And so I know that I'm not capable of that today. And lo and behold, ever since then, I have not had car issues. I've actually been very blessed with my vehicles. I mean, it's, it's all, a, it's a pattern. You have to keep following. You see, everybody believe into the law of attraction and they say, how come it's not working? But the law of attraction works negative and positive the same way. Mm -hmm. If you keep bringing the old patterns and you keep thinking about it more often than you think about the positive patterns, then what's your subconscious going to bring you? The old patterns. If you tell the universe how much you hate this thing and all you tell it all day long is how much it's going to serve you up what you're serving to it. That's all, it, that's all it is. It's like I used to, I used to give that, that example, you know, a woman sitting at home and uh, watching soap opera all day long and go and pray to God or who, asking the universe for, to get her dream husband. And, and that was 20 years been doing that, praying. But and watching soap opera, getting into the fantasy of those uh, shows, and that dream husband didn't show up yet. Then one day she said, I think a lot on the TV now. Let's go back to my old club and join it again. And she got out from home, and in two or three weeks, she found somebody and he was the perfect match for her. Because if you're praying to God or asking the universe, if you make, don't make it a move towards something, there's no Holy Ghost going to knock on your door. This is the man of your life. <laughs> because the universe or God, they want you to move into a direction in order for them to adjust you to what you're asking for. 
Well, <clears throat> in very practical terms, if you'd never get off of the couch, what, how will anything change? Nothing, because nobody's going to knock on your door and say, I'm, I'm the change of your life. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen that way. We need to take an action. Mm -hmm. And then it's amazing what happens because once you take an action, the universe proves to you that it's supporting you every step of the way. You've always been supported. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, but you're always supported. Mm -hmm. But the only time you're not supported when the universe is confused what you want. Then they sit and wait for you to clarify it. Mm -hmm. It might take you 10 years to clarify it. Because but, if you don't know what you want, how can the universe give it to you? Yes, they're not going to guess you. And because, they, first of all, they respect your free will. So they're, gonna, they're not going to go over that. You know, and that's not going to be possible. So you have to make the first move, the first direction where you want to be going. Then they start putting the carpet in front of you to walk into it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Laying out the yellow brick road for you. Okay. Um, you said something interesting. You said they are not going. Who's they? Who you want. <laughs> Whoever you want. That's Look, it. Look, I'm, I'm being polite with they probably, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because look, we, we all have guides. I work with a lot of guides. I work with uh, uh, spiritual councils in many areas of different things. So it's not I'm referring to one person that is guiding you. There's a lot of, you can have any, as many councils as you want eventually. So in any area you want even. So like, for example, I have two councils I created a long time ago uh, from this beginning. And those councils for me, uh, one is for the physical healing I used to do. I had 12 doctors on it. And another council was 12 doctors for the mental emotional healing I do today. And, but you have to remember my clairvoyance opened when I was eight years old. And, and this is what all my training, it was through my councils. I didn't study healing. I didn't study anything. It's all been passed down to me. I didn't need to study anything because I have all the information. Why I need to go and read a book or study with somebody where I have the access to the highway. How did you bring those councils together? How did you create them? They, they helped me create them. I didn't know about it. They exist even in the beginning. They told me we're going to have a council. I said, what the heck is that? You know, mm -hmm. I said, it's a council. We're going to be 12, uh, 12 into that council. It's like you're in a, in a boardroom, you are the CEO, and we are happy to, to do whatever we have to do. So when somebody comes for healing for me, they said, uh, I never usually ask them what they have as a problem. Because it doesn't matter. It's not me who's doing the healing. If a healer tell you it's me who's doing the healing, tell them, oh boy, you know, because it's not us who's doing the healing. We are only a, a channel through that energy through us to make it facilitated, but we're not doing the healing ourselves. And that, that healing, if somebody comes in, the right doctor from my council is gonna be working with that, with that person. Hmm. I don't have to put a, the effort for it myself, whatever it needs to come. Otherwise they don't show up to me if I don't have a sole agreement with them. I'm not here for everybody and you're not here for everybody. You're here for the people you have an agreement with. And to be honest, there can be a lot of people, those people. Um, yeah, I would say so, considering your, the vastness of your clientele and the diversity in your clientele. And, and remember, all my, I don't do marketing much, me. Okay, I sent maybe to my newsletter uh, one email, I have this coming. And I put maybe sometimes onto Facebook, I have this coming. But I don't go and press on, and call calling anybody or do anything. Most of my clientele are word of mouth. And those clientele came in from 53 countries. Word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I have to, because I believe in the soul agreement, first of all. I will attract them. I can call them from sitting from home. I start to call in the soul agreement. If they are ready to invest in themselves, I'm ready to receive them. 
Um, and you had said that you think that you believe that we do have a solar agreement, the two of us. And I wonder how is it that you determine because we were video calling and you sat there and you worked out numbers real quick. But oh, I don't I don't have them with me now. <laughs> no, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry. But I'm just so curious because um, you know, creating a council of advisors and the, the food council is not the the, so, the council is not the sole agreement. No, no, no. But um, just the ability to create that council or the ability to determine whether or not, because how many people of us actually get wrapped up in our lives with people who aren't maybe, um, maybe we don't have contracts with or, um, the, the but so how having... do, how do people, how do people have that sense of discernment? You know, Look, the, the one who always for you, regardless what you're doing, you have an agreement. Mm -hmm. the, the one who always talk in your back, you don't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? In your mm -hmm. face, they're smiling at you. You know, everything is nice, nice, but in your back, they stab in you. So there's a really practical 3D, 3D way to determine whether or not. It is, but me, I determine it from the numbers, from numerology. Like for me, for example, I do the numerology chart for everybody. I don't have a problem if I have an agreement or not. I give 100% of it into that chart, knowing that this person will be the last time I speak with them. Now, when I have their date of birth, I compare them with my date of birth, I will see if I have agreement with them or not. And by doing that, then I will propose to take them to the next level. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I, I give them the 100% guidance where they need to go, how they need, you know, but I leave them searching for their own people that have, they have agreement with because they will have better time than being with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't want, I'm not driven because I want the money. Uh, let me get this more client, more client. And that's what's driven by this industry. Everybody wants to have more, 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 but many people, they're not happy with that. Well, that where's person. the quality? You know what you I mean? Know. So yeah. it's just to make money. Mm -hmm. That's not the interest that I've, I've been following for years. It's not just the money about it. It's about, I want to have a peace of mind working with somebody. Now, even if I have somebody with soul agreement, they might be off the uh, line with me. And the reason because, okay, look, everything you need to invest into it, of your time, of your energy. But if you don't want to do the work, it's not my job to do the work on your behalf. because you have to be self-responsible for your own life. It's not my life, it's your life. I will guide you to it. And that is where people will fall short. Even if I have soul agreement, I have some people, I have even soulmate connection with them, which is the highest connection you can have with somebody. But with a soul connection, most of the time I found with a soul connection that people are afraid to be around you because they know you're gonna get them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they leave me for 10 years and they come back they have to go through their own thing for 10 years and then but there's nowhere to find me again mm -hmm. you know what i mean and that's where the beauty of all of that is how we be able to mix uh, and you know because once you have the agreement with somebody you agree that you're going to cross each other into this life mm -hmm. If you made the promise to each other that we're gonna do that for each other, then we cross. Because if you don't cross, if you're sitting into your comfort seat, sitting into your back seat, how many people are really waiting for you to cross the pass that you promise you do, mm -hmm. but you're afraid to do it, or you're you're too comfortable to do it, or you whatever excuse you have. Mm -hmm. Being a sitting in the back seat, being a passenger. Going into the front, and because those people are waiting for you, because they cannot get their knowledge except from what you're going to provide them. Because 
somebody else might give them something, but not the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Well, and we all have many people um, that we must have those agreements with. I think of all of them. There's a lot. A yeah. Lot of people. All of the people that have helped contribute to shape me the way that I am. We have a lot of people. Some, you, you go for coaching with somebody, either it work out or it doesn't. But it does, if it doesn't work out, if we see, see the agreement, we see that we have a weak agreement with that person. Mm -hmm. And that's when the contrib contribution from that agreement that it's not supposed to work out here. But you have to cross to that coach because that coach introduced you to somebody else indirectly. Mm -hmm. So the coach is a kind of a liaison between you and someone else to connect you. He's a connector or she's a connector mm -hmm. that just only needs to connect you. Like I'll give you an example how you get, we, we got connected through someone else, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So there's also the connectors are agreement, but their job is only to connect. Their job is only to connect. Yeah. And there's some other people for them to connect them with some other people. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a it's a circle that keep running, but they're going into other circles. Mm -hmm. Like the like the flower of life. So, but it's that's the beauty of it. But if you're sitting behind the back seat, too comfortable, and doing nothing, you're gonna miss a lot of. If you're sitting in the back seat, you're gonna miss a lot of the fireworks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's Absolutely. the whole point. That's um, the whole point. And then you complain why my life is it is this way. Mm -hmm. If you want to know one thing that you are in your comfort zone and you're in, if you complain too much. Ah. Uh, um. How I'm I'm really curious about this. How is it that you decided you wanted to start doing art therapy more, and and how did you develop your method? of um, using that with people? First of all, the, the, the way I got into art is a strange way, but it was started. Now, before I start doing, all of this is my paintings, but before I start into any painting, I have no idea about anything called art. I've never been into a museum, I've never been anywhere. I was invited to a client, his girlfriend give, uh, said, we're doing a, a paint night on his birthday. Do you like to come? Now, when I got that question, do you like to come? I have two choices to answer. Yes, I can. No, I can't because of my knowledge that I'm not an artist. I never done art, I never done anything in that nature. But for me, because I never tried it, I said, yes, I come. What I get to lose, it's a night. So never turn down that. an opportunity. Uh, look, how, how can you know if you like Chinese food if you never ate Chinese mm -hmm. food? Mm -hmm. How can you tell if you like Thai food if you never tried it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a, we have to try w once. So the same teacher asked me to come for another event a month later to do the same thing because the first painting one we did it, we, we were into Mercury retrograde. So we did the same thing into the non uh, uh, outside the Mercury retrograde, and the, the, for the same painting, and it came totally different. It was so interesting. Now, Jan, I joined maybe three times in 2017, paint night. So some of my clients said, "Why don't you let's go for a paint night?" So I went. So it's like there's some people that kept keeping me to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. slowly. So mm -hmm. in, in 2017, maybe I did five or six painting. A total. In 2018, when I did something into a small change in my name, on that year, 2018, I did 95 paintings. Now, I know how to open someone's gift. Artistic council. That's what I, I teach now into my, my Awaken the Artist Within. I'm teaching people how to paint, but I'm, I'm not teaching them how to paint 
Physically, technically, technically, technically yeah. I'm teaching them how to awaken their gift all the way. You know, and I had so many, the opportunity to even have artists that study arts in art school, but they've been stuck and feeling blocked. And they're completely flourishing at this time. So all of these start to play. And then in 2019, I did about 100 uh, something of paintings. And now I have over to a total of over 250, 60 paintings uh, done. And I do it for fun. Now, mm -hmm. the fir how I mix both things, I'm already releasing e emotions. And what a better way to release emotions through painting. Right. So what I, what we, I go through a meditation with someone in the, in the Awaken Your Artist, we go through some certain meditation to, uh, to open up a certain chakra maybe, or whatever it is, there's some feeling we have to work on. And then when we get into the meditation, we allow those feelings to start to sh show up. I tell them, go purge your, all your feelings into the painting. Do you direct them as to what you will be painting that day? No, or is matter. it doesn't matter. whatever it's, they want? It's, it's a freestyle. Mm -hmm. it's a, there's no limitation. It's your creation. Why I need to put you a limitation on your creation? Mm -hmm. That's a limiting uh, mindset. So why I need to paint a rose that is already on a painting from someone else? Really, why I need to copy that rose? Why don't I don't create a weirder rose, maybe? Mm -hmm. You know, why I need to have exactly the same thing? Go just... We, 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 we will look into the energy on that program. We look into the energy of the colors. Let you feel the colors, the energy of them, because everything has vibration, including the colors. So, and then you start merging the colors. The, uh, awaken the, um, the uh, artist within. I'm going to have two new sessions coming up in December for that. One on maybe Thursday morning and one on Saturday morning. So... I suggest to keep up the flow of creating and helping people to awaken a gift and, and start flourishing from that. And the therapy from it, I created an event to do on, uh, here in Vancouver, like release, uh, release anxiety and overwhelm using with meditation and painting. So it's a full day workshop and we They draw a painting, that, and you don't have to be expert of painting, to be honest, just throw some colors into a canvas. And later on, later on, what we do is we go through the release of those feelings, where they came from, where they had them early in their childhood. We, we release a little bit from, the, from those feelings. We put it into more positive aspect of it. We substitute the... the anxiety was something positive for each one have might be different positive uh, aspect to it and then we will do another painting and just you have to instantly see the painting completely changed e instantly transmuting those emotions you're creating alchemists they're creating their own alchemist <laughs> yes that's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> you know so it's not like i'm teaching them how to paint uh, you, uh, i have all the brushes all the uh, tools whatever they need online i give them a list what you need minimum buy it from the dollar shop even mm -hmm. doesn't matter yeah we're playing you know i always say we are playing we're ha for me painting brings me joy and we all have to have something we're joyful about. It doesn't matter what it is. If you don't have your joy in your life today, on a regular basis, not in a blue moon, every blue moon I'm gonna do that joy. No, it gonna have to be on a regular basis, even maybe three, four times a week, you know, or, or more even, doesn't matter, this is a joy. Because if you don't have a joy in your life, technically you're dying slowly. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, about six different quotes about dying slowly just ran through my head. Yeah, and and it's it's um the cl cliche of humanity, isn't it? 
wasted lives, wasted time, wasted potential. Everybody sitting on their TV and watching programming their subconscious with garbage for nothing. Never thinking that they're capable of um, leaving a big ass footprint on this planet before they leave. I like one quote from Les Brown. I'm going to paraphrase it because uh, I don't uh, maintain stuff in my head. Me. I get the concepts, but I always so butcher the quotes. You know, but the, the concept is you can find the best symphonies, the best books unwritten, the best everything of life that's supposed to be, but never been done. You can find it in the cemeteries where people left this earth and never tried them. Which is so true. Yeah. And I remember when I used to live one time at, in, in, in front of me was the cemetery. I used to walk in, into this. It was a huge cemetery. My kids to put them to sleep, hmm. you know, in their stroller. And so many times when I walk through that cemetery, it's a long walk inside. And I come up, when I get home, I have the inspiration for something either mm -hmm. an article or a program or something. Mm -hmm. I just picked it up from the energy from that cemetery. To something that was left behind. It was left behind because I can tap into those energy. I can see that energy, you know, so they can, they can see from their side that I can see that they, they sent me the information. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Every, yeah. every program I did is came inspirational. Cause I didn't plan it. You were inspired. I want to inspire. Now what, what inspired me, if I want to get my inspiration, I want to uplift myself, I just go walk at the beach. Mm -hmm. Just looking through the vastness of the long distance that you can see, your eyes can take you, that already relaxed you. I don't know why somebody depressed and they're sitting home in a dim light. Really. Go outside. Why the doctor doesn't prescribe them, go take a walk in the nature. Put your bare feet on the ground. Put their bare feet, do something, but get mm -hmm. out from home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we have it into a culture of remote control, sitting and watching, programming, programming, programming. And they, then they say, uh, I wish I am that person on that screen. Mm -hmm. No, you might not like to wish what, who that person is in reality. Well, and how many people are sitting in their houses that they've never bothered to make a home? How many people have never um, cultivated the reality that they want within their own household? Why is somebody who hasn't put that much investment into themselves, you know, why, why would they ever think that they should leave their couch and go out into the world and affect change? Because they don't have the inspiration in the first place. Yeah. And they're not watching something to inspire them. Mm. You know, I mean, I wrote an article a long time ago, does your soul have a home? <laughs> because you're, we're sitting soulless because we think we're, we're just be me, Scotty, and they put you on this planet. That's not, you didn't come for that. Mm -hmm. You're not coming for a place that you haven't been before. I'll give you an example how it happened. I, the first time I went to Paris, I, I took a taxi. I was in, in the downtown in the main area in, in Paris. I said, uh, I was going for two, three days. And I went on the street. Some tourists came in on the street. They asked me for direction because Trust I was home from the first one second, I put my foot on the ground. Hmm. That's magical. I felt it. I was home. There's, I went several times to Mexico, but I never felt home there, which is okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I didn't have many lifetimes maybe there. That's all. Um, my a distant, a distant cousin sent me or sent the family um, a video on public television about the German Russians that came over um, and settled in the Midwest. Um, this is where my grandmother's part of the family comes from. Um, and then my, um, on my dad's side or on my grandpa's side, it's, um, I believe straight Russian, but, um, they just, um, in this, 
uh, documentary, they described um, the feeling that the Germans who had gone into Russia, who had settled in Russia after Catherine the Great had decreed that the Germans could come in. Um, Heimweh is what they call it, but it's a feeling deeper than homesickness. Um, and it just, and I, and I have that, I have a Heimweh um, that I've felt my whole life and um, I'd never had a word for it, but now I do. Um, but it just makes me think about, you know, how much, like you said, stepping onto the ground in Paris, like how much our previous um, incarnations or ancestors, how much the land that they were connected to can affect us. It does because it's energy. Mm -hmm. It's we bring in energy with us, certain feelings, certain experiences. And the same happened to me when I went to India. I felt home there. I went a few times to India. You know, I traveled 42 countries. So in my traveling, this is how I learned a lot of the experiences. This is how I can open and work with different nationalities because I've been there. I felt there's something. I learned about the cultures. I, lo I learned about the religion, how they function, how they operate the mentality, how it is there. So that will help. And then if I had a past life into that place, I'm already having that energy flow in me unconsciously that is stored in one filing cabinet somewhere inside, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that is accessible to my subconscious. We all have those quality in us, but how many of us will take them, take them for granted? Mm -hmm. And we don't do nothing about them. Um, you know, we're, we're all kind of having to, we didn't start at zero. It's like we started at like negative zero because, you know, none of us are taught when, or negative three or whatever, because none of us are taught like from the very beginning, get to know your soul, get to know yourself, get to know your connection to source or whatever you want to call it, and then lead your life from that point, you know, so some of us never actually get up to that point where they introduce themselves to their souls, to their, you know, higher self or whatever, um, to be able to take the steps that you're talking about where they can trust their intuition, where they, they realize that they have an intuition, you know, how can you, um, you know, expect people to, well, and I do, cause I hold people to a high standard, but, um, you know, when you're starting in, uh, at such a deficit to what your potential is, um, it's it, it's interesting all the ways that you that there are to help people get there though. If you have the the questioning always on your mind, questioning things, mm -hmm. then you will have the drive to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a curiosity thing. Mm -hmm. But man, there is nothing called coincidence in life. Nobody put somebody in front of you for just no reason. Mm -hmm. It's not about the the whatever is that we call coincidence happen is what you're going to be doing about it that matters how you're going to perceive it how you're going to how you perceive it and how you're going to act about it you know so the universe always going to put you the right people in front of you but how many are you declining mhm mm especially young people. Um, so many teachers that are put in front of them that they never recognize or appreciate and take advantage of. Mm -hmm. There's always somebody on every stage in your life. Mm -hmm. When you were a baby growing up, even you're growing up with a, with a programmation of your environment coming from family, from culture and religion, you still have somebody to, be, to take you, pull you out. Mm -hmm. I started my journey into the spiritual side at, at age of eight. I grew up in a Catholic family, in a, a, a living in a Jewish uh, neighborhood in the beginning, and that Jewish neighborhood is located in a Muslim city. You know, so nobody's going to believe what you're doing anyway. They're going to get you the white coat at that time. <laughs> but it, it happened that I opened my clairvoyant. I've seen my whole life and what's happening into the world uh, 
might might happen in many different ways. I've seen a lot of it. When I moved to the States, every single place I lived in, I would have already seen it. Mm-hmm. So everything was planned, shown to me what's, what's going to be. But how many, most of us, we go and talk to somebody to tell them, look what I'm doing, look what I'm seeing, and somebody come and crush you. Mm-hmm. So don't believe in that. That's your imagination. That's your whatever it is. You know, they crush you in it. So, and don't talk in front of people about that. Mm -hmm. You know, don't let anybody know how crazy you are. uh, uh, Yeah. So just keep it in the family for the time being, you know, so, (laughs) but then you end up doing nothing with it. Yeah. Well, you forget, you forget about it. Think about how magic the world was when we were children and now like you almost have to struggle to remember and for you when you were a child it was just the truth like the world is a magical place and now as an adult we've forgotten how how to connect with that feeling yeah. i mean and and we make choices in life and we need to start make the better choices mm-hmm. that's all that's all it is it's not like it's a rocket science it's not something you know just make a better choice and and please make that choice based on your interests not somebody else mm-hmm. your authentic you know I mean? wants and needs as opposed to what society because, or family tells you is because the way anytime be. you decide for somebody else you're just a copy of them mm-hmm. you lost your originality mm-hmm. and if for 30 years i've been doing numerology charts and i haven't seen it two charts the same Hmm. So that means we're all unique in a different in our own right. Mm-hmm. So stop trying to be somebody else because you'll never be that somebody else. Mm-hmm. And um, maybe stop being scared of getting to know yourself. You should probably introduce yourself because no. I. You know what's the biggest problem is that hmm. we have lack of self love. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. We're putting everybody in front of us before ourselves. Um, I knew that the biggest problem that I was having was that I did not have a way to connect with my higher self. And um, I knew that that person was there, that, that that soul was there. I knew it because like for years, she's been screaming at me, you know, and um so I finally, I finally developed a method. Um, and now we have her and I, we have this amazing relationship um, where she sends me love songs to remind me how much she loves me. You know, it, who people who can't, don't have that in their life, like the most fulfilling relationship that you could ever have. If you don't have that in your life, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're missing out. Um, cause it really is. It's, it's only been a few months, but it's already the most fulfilling relationship that I have is with myself. And it's not with anybody else. Mm-hmm. And even if like today you have kids, everybody will say, I need to help them. I need to, yes, I live do, for my children. That's what I live for say. my children, but, mm-hmm. but don't disregard yourself, please. Mm-hmm. Because you're not giving a good example to your kids. Yeah. You're how not are, teaching them the right way. How are you going to teach them anything if you're not living it? If you know? you're not living it. If you're not living and they, it. And, they, and your kid, trust me on that, they find your, the fakiness in you. Mm-hmm. And they'll hold it against you. And hold it against you. And, and, and if you, you're complaining all the time about your mom or you, your dad or whoever it is, and one of your kids, one day they're going to hit you with that. Mom, you keep complaining about mom. Mm-hmm. about your mom but you're becoming her to us mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know what i mean and it's the same pattern that's been lived out in just about every family generation after generation after generation doing the same. yeah and, and we, we complain we complain we blame we blame we complain we blame and it's a vicious circle mm-hmm so where you want to go from there is a call. We have to make newer choices. Right. But it's not going to happen while you're sitting on your couch. 
And it's not going to happen while you're denying who you are. Like when when I when I do the healing, uh, the inner child, when in my soul to soul connection, we we will go through certain feelings that the the biggest feelings. I, I according uh, I go for the map of consciousness of Dr. Hawkins. We go from uh, shame, uh, grief, and etc. But uh, but at the end of this program, I emphasize for three weeks on self-love and forgiveness. Because that's more important to me than anything else. It's the most important, right? I mean... We still we have to delete those emotions because they're putting us in, into a wrong uh, vicious circle of keep attracting those emotions. But... Forgiveness, and by the way, forgiveness is not to forgive your mom and dad. That's not the problem, your mom and dad. Your mom and dad, you signed a soul agreement with them. Otherwise, why you chose those parents, you didn't chose the neighbors. Mm -hmm. They're cuter there. Mm -hmm. They seem they're having more fun. But you chose them because they have something for you from them. Mm -hmm. Something so that you valued to, before you got here that you agreed to, that you wanted. You made your research before you came in. You mm -hmm. found the, the right uh, match. So why I need to forgive them then? There's nothing for to forgive them. They I did exactly. Do, yeah, they did exactly what I asked them to do. You know, but I would need to forgive myself. If what they did to me was in a period of two years, when I was five years old, now I'm 45. Who did the more damage in 40 years? If you dwelt on it and if you held yep. on to it, who did more damage to you? Yeah. The forgiveness is to us. Mm -hmm. Not to my mom and dad or even somebody abused me physically or whatever it is. It's not the forgiveness to them. It's the forgiveness to myself to keep those emotions piled up in me Pardon and then get you. me sick even mm -hmm. because I keep resisting to let them go. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that, you know, there's a lot of people who um, think that we need to just put more love and light out into the world. But those people, a lot of them um, haven't actually figured out how to love themselves. So how are you going to love the rest of the world when you still berate yourself and refuse to forgive yourself and refuse to treat yourself correctly? The you way I say it. The way I say it in a very, everybody might understand it. If you, don't, if you don't put the gasoline in your car, how far it will take you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're giving your compassion to everybody outside without filling up yourself first, how much of your compassion is really v valid compassion? Mm -hmm. When you're not that example of that compassion. Well, and if you're not um, giving com the same compassion to yourself that you are everyone else, then really, what is your motivation? Are your, can you be sure that e you even have true intentions or that you're um, actually creating more good in the world? If you, if you want to create a better world, start creating it in you. Mm -hmm. So it's always starts from us. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, I, it's not for me to go and, and go and help people in Africa where I'm not able to help myself. I'm mm -hmm. distracting myself with the people in Africa. It doesn't mean we don't have compassion towards them. We do, but we need to start us to be fulfilled first before we give the rest out there. Mm -hmm. We cannot drive on an empty tank. Well, and if you're trying to provide solutions without actually um, doing that hard inner work first, you can't ever even be certain that your solutions will be helpful. They might be the opposite of helpful. Uh, and, and this is where we have to start thinking about it from those perspective, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. and, and why we're not being or living what we're trying to preach or what we're trying to give, mm -hmm. what we're trying, you know, because people, we're all spiritual beings we are spiritual before being into a body. Mm -hmm. 
we're not a, a physical being have a, having a spiritual experience. We're a spiritual being having a the physical. The other way around. Yeah. I love that. I love that saying. It's one of the most true things I've ever heard. And stop complaining about your body. You chose the body you want to be in. <laughs> Heck yeah. And it's serving you, by the way. And, and, and uh, st stop complaining about it. If you want to mm -hmm. change it, you can change it. But stop complaining. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where the worst case scenario is to complain, to complain, or maybe start blaming it. I have it this way because of that, but that and that. And who cares? Well, think about what a, a low vibe, talk, coming back to vibrations, what a low vibration ungratefulness is. And I feel such a sense of gratefulness toward my body. It, it wakes up every day. It functions, you know, and I have to really do the bare minimum to, you know, I have to keep moving and, and feed it healthy food. But other than that, my brain functions, my heart functions, my lung function. I never have to ask for it. And what a gift it is to be having a physical body and a physical 3D reality. Uh, that is a magnificent thing to be grateful for, you know. And, it, and mo most people are not. No, no. That's where the problem is. And we have to look into things through us first before we go into the world and start trying to reach out for other people without reaching out for ourselves. Because mm -hmm. trust me, you still can find an inner child in you that's still crying that everybody left her or left him out of the picture. Mm -hmm but that inner child still trapped in us. Mm -hmm. Trying to be understood. Yeah. And there's one thing I would like to mention about healers, speci specifically healers, is that many of them have the, if I'm healing other people, meaning I am healed, that's not true. I see what you're yourself. saying. Yeah, you had but cut out, you had cut out, but let me just say this back to you. If you're going around trying to heal other people and you haven't actually healed yourself, how much, how effective are you going to be really? But even if, if you're healing everybody else, there's some tendency in the healers, they think that if I'm healing everybody else, that's mean I'm, I'm healed already. Mm. But that's not true at all. That's not true at all. Yeah. It, it's not applicable here. You still have to heal yourself first, mm -hmm. you know, in order to be into a different perspective of your healing, to take it a notch bigger than it. You're playing safe. You know, we all have tendency to, we can be healers. We can be anything we want to be. Mm -hmm. And whatever you chose to be, but be that choice first to yourself. Talk about it from your own personal experience, not just I'm giving you healing coming from the divine and I'm gonna put it in you. Yeah, mm -hmm. big deal. That's only coming from the divine through you to that person. So, but you, you're not touched. You still need to have that divine in you first to heal you. And then we, instead of making our excuse that I'm healing everybody, so I don't need to be, you know. What resistance would people have to convincing them, themselves that they're already healed, so they don't have any more work to do? What, where does that resistance come from? It comes because they have, they're afraid to deal with their own stuff. Just fear. Just fear. Just fear. Because most people, they tell you, I don't want to go back to those things. I don't want to remember, I've buried them for a long time, but yeah, but you're still attracting people, reminding you of that. Mm -hmm. How many times you hear people saying, oh, I keep attracting uh, men in my life or women in my life, that reminds me of my mom or my dad. Mm -hmm. Really? So how much you dealt with your mom and dad? Not that much. Mm -hmm. Or you wouldn't be doing these same behaviors over and over. Mm -hmm. you know and even your kids some of them might be reflecting and triggering you to remind you of something from mom and dad because mm -hmm. that's their job coming after you mm -hmm. because you've been 
postponing it so they come after you now in order for you to address it. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Um, before I started, I like to do, um, I froze. Can you hear me? Okay. I like to um, pull a tarot card before I sit down to do a podcast. Um, okay. And I pulled the, I don't know, I want you to see him, the Prince of Cups. Okay. And um, the main energy of the card was expressive. And I just thought, how perfect. I just need, I just need to let Joseph express himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So is there, is there any, I always like to ask people, um, what's on your mind lately? Like what, what are the really big concepts that you're dealing with right now? Just internally um, that you're, that you're working on. Uh, for me or for others? No, for you, for you. Per I mean, just, you know, thinking about your place in the world right now and the world is so wild and it, maybe it has to do with you or maybe it has to do with other things going on in the world. But what are, what are the things that are really causing you to pause and really contemplate? Uh, first of all, my, my shock, how much people are still programmed hmm. in this world. And they're not even seeing it. Yeah. You know, and that's scary. Yeah. And sad. To be honest. It really makes me sad. You know, so even for myself, I've been thinking even to retire completely from the healing aspect of things at one point. You know, and soon to make that point. And just sit and do what I enjoy doing, painting. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of bothering, if people, they don't want to wake up, then stay asleep. I don't have a problem with that. But you're in pretty good demand. I would say there's people, plenty of people to keep you busy. Do you I, think I, that? I, but you see the, the state of energy that is the world is into today is very hard to bear hmm. energetically. And especially if you're very sensitive to energy. You know, recently in the last few months, I probably slept more than I slept in my 50 years before. To that just, extent. Just exhausted. Exhausted, of energetically exhausted. I do see exactly what you mean because um, I work with the public and my hands are physically on people. Um, and these people have um, an emotional attachment to me. Um, and I know exactly what you mean. The energy when I get home from work, even if I only work for a few hours. The uh, it's, not the, it's not the amount of hours. No, no. It's the amount of energy that's been drained out of me. And, and also the amount of energy that I've picked up from other people that I now have to shed so that I can just breathe and, you know. So that's, that's also scary, by the way, to see how much people really are sleep. Yeah, sleeping mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and that makes you wonder you know what's the point even though I'm aware that my work needed now more than uh, this is why I'm training people to do my work even mm -hmm. because I want people to awake to so help to awaken as many as possible because I cannot awake everybody myself mm -hmm. that's not my job mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I will have, I'll be happy to awake the one I have agreement with them. Yes, that's for sure. I will do it at all time. But I'm not, I'm not going to be, I'm not here for this 7.5 billion. And nobody is. No. No one is. You're only here for the one you've signed agreement. You know, some will pick up everybody just to make money from it. But that's a choice. But that's not where... There's nobody is here to help everybody. Mm -hmm. You might have 10 million people you need to help. And then you say, how am I going to help 10, 10 million people if I'm living in Nebraska, for example? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Have you written a book yet? No, I don't like to write. Oh, okay. Have you done a podcast? Have you done, done something to start spreading your name out? I have a podcast, I done it three years ago. And I haven't touched it for almost two years. You did one episode? 
No, no, I have oh, okay. about 19. Okay, okay. It's been running till now. I have 13,000 downloads in it. And you haven't touched it? For two years. <laughs> now, you and I can tell me there's not enough people that they listen to it. That's 13,000 from something I haven't touched for two years. I need to get back to it. It's called numerology number four for life. Oh, that's beautiful. That's you know a beautiful I mean? name for a podcast. You know, so <laughs> numerology number four mm -hmm. life, you know. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and people are still listening to it because I explain about the numbers. Yeah. It's a 19, a 19 episode. And it's my, my podcast is like, I make it so simple. It is about seven to 10 minutes long. Oh, okay. It's not like each episode. To, each episode, that's yeah. all. Because people are too busy to listen to for an hour thing these days. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And most podcasts, that people are stuck in traffic. They're listening to it at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So why I need to make something too heavy to, <laughs> you know, yeah. simplify it? Now, Let them I absorb did, it. Yeah. And, and this way they can come for more and for more. They come for the small nuggets and they move on with those nuggets that keep them to think about it all day to see what am I that vibration. I can act like this many times. So I might have this number with me mm -hmm. or I have lack of that. I don't, I'm not that at all, you know? So from that aspect. So I need to get back to it. Now, the numerology for life, I'm going to, the idea of it is to explain numerology. Now I'm going to start putting psychosomatic numerology. It's the effect of the body energy from the energy for form into your chakras. So I'm going to put those uh, soon. But the number four is to go about the four pillars, the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual aspect of those, the four number. Mm -hmm. Because the four is about your four pillars. But, well, and that's why I said that is a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful name. You know yeah. what I mean? So when I start mm -hmm. talking about the four, I'm going to talk about life in general. I can talk on anything. Yeah. Because it, it can take it to anything, to any aspect you want to go with it. So what, there, what, what, um, what direction do you want to take that podcast if you're going to jump back in it? I'm going to be talking more on the healing aspect. Okay. The four, I'm mm -hmm. going to emphasize. Because you see, everybody in life, they're going after that. I have a problem in my life. and I haven't found my destiny or life path or uh, uh, purpose. I haven't found those. Yes, you are on purpose. Don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. But your purpose to be fulfilled is to be happy, jo joyful, and fulfilled. And it doesn't matter what you do. Mm -hmm. That's what people don't want to understand that. Because they're fighting, 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 working hard to get, let me find how to sell this, my product, how to, you know, I, I went into an abuse, and now I can help people with abuse, and blah, blah, blah. Yes, take a breath. Are you happy, joyful, and fulfilled? Maybe in some areas, yeah, but some areas, no. That's mean you're not on purpose yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what we do. Now, once we are happy, joyful, and fulfilled, then we start going into our calling. What's the sole purpose for us to be doing here? But don't jump into concentrating on your purpose because your purpose is already to be happy, joyful, and fulfilled in all four pillars, the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. The physical has different movement where you live, every, the environment you're in. Are you happy into your relationships? Are you happy into, into your health? Are you happy in your finance? That's all physical. Mm -hmm. So if you're not happy in one, any of these areas, you're still not on purpose. Right. I feel like um, at this point, Joseph, your purpose is just to 
build up that podcast and keep painting, just retire, start putting all of that mental focus into your podcast and you just paint away and enjoy, enjoy your world you've created for yourself. I love painting. So it's not, it's not going to stop. No, no. But you know, if you're feeling like your efforts are getting wasted, I would say stop doing that. I, I will at one point. Yeah. I will. I'm winding down a little bit. So I'm going to be putting like the, I still will do some healing, but for very selective people. Sure, sure. You know, my, Reserve my, my, your program, energy. Is not like, my program is not like I'm expecting I want to have 70 people in the class. I don't want to work with 70 people, to be honest. How could you, you know? doing what you do? No, but my class is five to 10 people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's enough mm -hmm. for, for that class, you know, and, and that's where I can have more intimate conversation mm -hmm. individually instead of having 70 people sitting in front of me. I prefer to open two classes and instead of being putting 30 people in the same class. Right. When I, I had one time a class with 30 people, I opened one in the morning, one in the evening. Which one you want? Take one of the two. So I had 10, 15 in here and I have the, uh, the rest in the evening. So I separate them. And I give them the choice to watch both calls mm -hmm. because the conversation will change. Yeah, and you don't want to miss something that could be valuable just because you weren't in that yeah. class. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's very so they practical. Have the this is soul to soul one. This is how I do it. When I have uh, uh, too many people, I, I separate it into two classes. Mm -hmm. And that's how, how it's been uh, doing it. But this is where... It's very much, I'm very much attracted to the paintings. I still can do healings through the paintings. And at the same time, I'm having more fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And this is why I, I decided to start two classes of painting. They awaken the artist within. I'm okay. doing two classes, not one. One on Thursday morning and one on Saturday morning. You pick whatever class you want. Because mm -hmm. remember, this class to me is not like you have to brainwash your head. We're having fun. Right. Yeah, because a lot of this is um, real heavy work, you know. But if you're just there to create something, we don't need to. to be, you know, and I will help you to do your council of your artist council. Oh, Okay. If very I mean, cool. Yes, I do. Very cool. So um, all of the participants could each develop their own council, bring together their own council to help them with their creativity. Yeah. Any time they have a question, they can talk with that council. Mm, that's you awesome. Know? And even the council, sometimes you can invite your grandmother because you, you feel comfortable with her, you can invite mm -hmm. her and, and she already passed away and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. you, you might say, but my grandmother wasn't an artist. Yeah, but she's on the other side. She has access to everything. Mm -hmm. And so, how do you know your grandma wasn't an artist? You know? And how do you know? Sometimes if you never met her. Well, or maybe you don't consider what she was passionate to be art, but she did. So we always have an excuse for anything usually, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, but you can have your grandmother as an, you know, and, and, and that council can be people even live. Mm -hmm. You Just, like to have an artist, you love their work, you love how they move their hands, their blah, blah, blah. Invite them to be your con a new council. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, you're Don't not- worry, You're not gonna keep them awake all night long. Well, this is the um, <laughs> beauty of learning to work with, um, and hone your imagination, right? You can have whatever you want, whatever you want. It's open. Mm -hmm. You know, like we have one call, it's about the future self. We imagine what your future self look like in two months, what your future self look like in six months, in mm -hmm. a year, you know? And in each door you, you get into, draw whatever you feel in that door. Mm -hmm. So you're doing four paintings. That's wonderful. You know what I mean? What a beautiful uh, exercise. And, uh, I'm, I'm having one, is, uh, one new program in 2021 is to go through the whole chakra system. 
and empty all the frustration, all the anger, all what we have from this life or any other life and dump it into a painting. Mm -hmm. And you can go and review that as many times as you want if you felt that chakra is not emptied 100% yet. Mm -hmm. You can create 20 paintings out of that. And um, that's creation. Yeah, exactly. Why are we not creating enough? I think people are afraid to create. They're afraid it's not going to be good enough. They're afraid that they won't like it. They're afraid that it won't be authentic. They're, they're afraid, 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 afraid. So, the, all of these are nice, nice talk, but their only problem is there's, they only have too much judgment on themselves. Yeah. That's where the problem is. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not about, uh, I'm going to be criticized here. I'm going to be then done this. I'm going to be this or that. To be honest, I have the first time when I did any painting. Usually, when you have a painting, you're still shy about it, and you're, you know, where, the, where the, the first thing I had the painting on, I put it on Facebook. No fear. I don't care if somebody wants to like it or not. That's not my business. Mm -hmm. Did you like it? Doesn't matter. I just put it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and from my early ones, now I'm. Because I, my, my knowledge now is becoming different, so, so I'm start to revise them. Oh, okay. Do you go what back I mean? to the same canvas or do you try to recreate it? No, it's the same canvas. Mm -hmm. You know, they're acrylic, they're easy to play with, you know, and I can change and they become a new, a new form. Because now my knowledge is not the same as it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm sure that you've picked up um, technique and all of those things. Yeah. Which is nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But several ones that I've just played with them. Mm -hmm. And, but there's something really fulfilling about learning or trying something new and learning about it, especially if it's but something that I'm sustains you. Man. What's that? I'm a Gemini. So I'd like to keep trying. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But it, new. Yeah, um, something that is a sustainable um, uh, craft that you can continue to grow in, you know. Especially, I like the ones that are scary to start. Sometimes you see the pictures that the painting that you don't like might be your best painting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My sister is an artist. She's a classically trained artist, and she has her master's in fine art and she hates every single one of her paintings she needs to take my course then. yes she does yeah she because um she can't, she can't completely change yeah she uh has has left you know because she doesn't quite she's not quite ready for what i have to offer so i i think i've been disowned about three times from her <laughs> <laughs> i just tell her i love you and when you're ready to come back i'm here that's all you cannot do more than that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's all it is. Yeah. Life is simple. We complicated. Remember that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. For sure. So that's the way it is. Thank you, Joseph, for talking to me. What else? What else do you have to say about the numerology before I let you go? Uh, the numerology of twenty twenty one this year coming up. Twenty twenty one is. It's about freedom. It's about expansion. Where you see yourself, how, how you see yourself, it becomes your limitations. How far you want to go, there's no limit into where you want to be going. It is about expressing yourself, it's about expressing your passion, it's about expressing you have vivid imagination with the five and how much you're capitalizing on it and, and using it. Hmm. That way, now, Remember, every vibration has a negative and positive. You can go completely destructive with the five, and you can go completely positive with the five. Positive is to expand yourself and you, to be free. Negative is you, you start following your indulgence, and your indulgence for some of the indulgence is gambling, drinking, smoking, drugs, overeating or undereating, over sex or under sex over shopping or under shopping, over exercising or under exercising. Anything you do too much of it or too little of it just to keep you, just to keep you away uh, 
uh, to keep you avoiding what you're supposed to be doing in the first place. Mm -hmm. It's called self-indulgence. Mm -hmm. And by the way, one of the biggest self-indulgence is being a workaholic. Mm -hmm. Because workaholic is you're avoiding something else. Remember, your, your purpose is to be happy, joyful, and fulfilled. If you have one area in your life that is not fulfilled, that's, you're going to distract yourself with something else. Mm -hmm. so what are you trying to avoid? Mm -hmm. A table has four legs. If you take one leg of the table, it's not going to be the same table. <sighs> so five is going to be a shocker for many. And for many, it's going to take them from a totally backward ways of taking them. It is as strong as in the negative, as, as strong as it is in the positive. There's no difference. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. Um, Jordan Peterson has um, a, a way of explaining the story of Noah and the ark. He says that um, Noah was successful because when he... Um, was told, you know, divinely that you need to build this ark. He already had his house and his family and his life in order. All of his pillars were strong and um, serving him um, so that he was able to accomplish what he was able to accomplish. And um, the way Peterson explains it is um, when the flood hits, because the flood will hit you, when the flood hits, what kind of person are you going to be? Are you going to be the person that has their house in order? Are you going to be the person that is um, that your family and your community is able to rely upon? Or are you going to be a person that's going to drain um, and become a problem for the others around you while they're trying to surf these waters of, of, of the flood and it's coming? So what kind of person are you going to be? I'm, I'm telling you right now, for some people, to 2021 is going to be tsunami. Mm -hmm. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. Tsunami coming. Mm -hmm. You know, because we've been neglecting many things for centuries. The vibration of the 5D coinciding with the five uh, year five on the universal, it's going to be tsunami. And just keep your seatbelt at all time. Don't take it out because you never know. Yeah. Also, maybe start working to put your house in order. Put your house in order. And this is very essential. This is why, like, from, from the perspective that I do in Soul to Soul is to unplug you from all the matrix, we call it matrix, mm -hmm. and unplug you from your ancestries that are slowing you down today. Mm-hmm. And in order for you to put your house back in order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's so many influences upon us that we're not even aware of, whether it comes from ancestry or whether it comes from a psychological trauma or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. But they're all going to be unplugged from. Mm -hmm. You have to unplug everything. Mm -hmm. You have to get rid of that stuff. You can't carry get, get it around rid. with you. Because you cannot start climbing if you still have your feet locked in into the piece of the matrix or a mm -hmm. piece of uh, of old memories mm -hmm. that is not al allowing you to move any further there is no flexibility in my movement anymore i just had this image of um somebody uh laying on the ground with a sheer rock face in front of them and they're on their back like a turtle with this giant heavy backpack and just struggling and struggling and if they just slip the backpack off and just climb up that wall it's going to be okay you don't have to climb either. You can take an elevator. <laughs> because you, look, your soul comes from a very well knowledge. Many people today are old souls and masters. So that means you're not going to climb step by step once you let go of your backpack. You can take an elevator, go back to the level of your soul and start operating from there. But how many people are ready to do that? Mm -hmm. That's where the, you know, but, but if you're not allowed, if you're not ready to do that, there's no problem. There's no judgment in it. Right. But, but stop complaining. What, um, what would you, you know, because <clears throat> there's a lot of different 
um, people and resources that you can go to to kind of help you take that backpack off, you know, um, to help guide that, you. That um, is how to solve that, what we do, take the backpack. What would you say to people who um, aren't in a position to be able to pay for that? You know, They're not able to pay for that? Yeah, um, I know a lot of people who are very interested in self-work, but they're kind of starving artists, you know. Um, Look, it's a situation by situation. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, put it to general. I've done 10 years of free healing. Very few, very few were successful with it. Because there wasn't that take it for granted. We mm -hmm. take it for granted. It has no value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you cannot do healing and no charges with it because it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. we, we, we don't take it for granted. We don't take it serious. You know, it's there. Okay. I'll, when I'm, if I'm free today, I can't do it. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like the same. If you pay the price, a premium into it, then you want to get, get your money's money back. worth. Yes. Yeah. That's this is... the whole point. This is what I tell, this is what I tell people when they ask why my app is um, a paid app. I tell them, um, you know, 85% of apps that you download, if they're free, most people won't open that app more than one time. But if I, they... I most, most of the app on my phone, I haven't touched them. Yeah, because you don't have any investment. And so if, you, if there's something that you thought was valuable enough to pay for, you're going to, you're incentivized automatically to engage with it, to take it seriously, to get the most out of it that you possibly can. Yeah, so this is where, if you don't charge doing healing, and this is, healing is personal. Mm -hmm. And you're not gonna take it for, you're gonna take it for granted if you're not paying. and. And you can see the difference immediately with somebody paying. They're hungry. They're all over the place. Into they're asking question in every class. They're asking, you know, because why is that? Because they invested into it. Mm -hmm. The other ones they're sitting. Oh, doesn't matter. They don't talk. Mm -hmm. And then they disappear. Ah, oh, didn't work. Yeah. Oh, it didn't do anything for me. That that program's crap. It, it doesn't have yeah. any value. So mm -hmm. why do you want to bother with that? That's why if you have sole agreement with somebody, they will do whatever it takes. It, it's not the problem. You can finance it if you, if you have a problem, but don't stuck into the idea. It cannot be done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Nobody's forcing anybody to pay in one shot. But at the same time, if you have, when you have the way, you'll make it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if healing is not your priority, you're not gonna do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Until it becomes priority into your life, then it will be feasible for you to start doing something. And this is why many people I am attracting these days, they are already sick. That means that's become a priority for them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If it's not, look, I'll give you an example. I tell you, it's gonna cost you X, Y, Z for this healing. And you say, no, that's too expensive. Uh, this is all, who cares? So a friend of yours call you two hours later and say, there's a trip to Hawaii, it's gonna cost even more than my, my program. He said, oh, okay, I'll find out, I'll manage it. I really wanna go on that trip. I wanna really go on that trip. So how come we were able to manage it there, mm -hmm. but you're not able to manage it here? Because you're able to prioritize a fun experience but, over prioritizing your own why health I have and well-being. To, why I have to give it for free if it's not priority to you? Mm -hmm. You know I'm really I mean? glad that I asked you that question because, and the reason that I asked you that question is because I, while I see value, um, I work with um, a couple of tarot card readers and energy healers, um, and I pay them a really fair amount of money. You know, they're not, they're not asking for a ton of money, um, but it's, I'm, you know, it's definitely enough where they're, they're fairly compensated. Um, and I, and, and I hear people say, you know, well, that's, you know, don't you think that that's self-indulgent or don't you think that, um, you know, that 
that's a waste of money. It's just, it's a novelty or a, um, an entertainment expense. And I, and I just, I'm, how you explain that perfectly, um, well, it's the perfect ex it's it's the perfect explanation of why you would invest and why you would prioritize this over say a trip to Hawaii or the you know, movies because look fear plays a big role when we're coming into healing there's a fear there mm -hmm. I'm gonna go remember that old stuff but to me to be honest if somebody I'm working with I never ask him what happened to you because really I don't care about that if they had a problem with their mom, with their dad, with a teacher, with whoever it is, I'm going to ask them only one simple question. What did, how, what did they make you feel? How did you feel? What feeling they left in you? That's all I care about. Mm -hmm. I don't care about the story. The story, we can wipe it out later on. But I care about what feeling they left in you. And that's all I need. Mm -hmm. And the rest are history. And it really is that easy. That's, that's simple. Mm -hmm. I think there's so many people who are so scared. They think that they're going to have to dive down into this dark night of the soul and deal with all of their inner demons right off of the bat. And it's going to be this horrible, terrifying experience like an ayahuasca trip or something. It doesn't need to be that. The, 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 the point is, how much are you willing, you know, if you don't have the time to do 12 weeks into clearing your stuff, then there's a problem. I'm not telling you a, a whole year even. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the, the priority for you to change your life, you're not going to be able to change it if you don't start cleaning up your foundation. Mm-hmm. Again, Jordan Peterson, he says, clean up your room. That's where you need to start. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. And let's keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Joseph. Do you go by Joseph or do you go by Joe? Don't tell me, Joe. No. When I went to the States, I went into Joe and I went, my life went disaster with it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, I didn't feel I didn't feel like I should be calling you Joe, but um, I wanted to be sure. No, you feel don't like worry, a Joseph. You're you. a Joseph. Don't, don't, I will stop you even. <laughs> <laughs> don't call me that. <laughs> no, because in between Joseph and Joe, I will lose the P and H from my name. Uh huh. P is about trust in myself. Is about my gift, my spiritual past, and H is about money power and achieving recognition. Why I need to take those away from my name. Can you tell me about Lindsay? Do you have a couple extra minutes? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to know about Lindsay? I don't Isn't know. It, look, I didn't it, know it, that the, every the, letter had an energy to it. Yes. Like, let me see. Uh, so basically from your full name, you have two vibrations missing in your in your name. And that includes Zimmerman. That two vibrations are two and six. That means you might have a problem with problem is an opportunity to grow, by the way. Mm -hmm. When I say problem is an opportunity to grow, you might have a problem in early stage in life from certain experiences that you went through in life that you lost, you lost the boundaries around you and you keep saying yes to everything because where you're supposed to say no, mm -hmm. you know. So you became also overly sensitive and two people, they usually, they have the tendency to be playing safe and they stay in the back seat. you know. Now, on the other side, when you, when you become overly sensitive, you can you have more tendency now to become a victim or a doormat for someone else. That's part of the experience you're coming for. If Zimmerman is your maiden name. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
now you have the, the six missing. The six missing, it's where the healing is part of that. It's where the ancestry has to be re removed. Because six is about the ancestry, is about family. Mm -hmm. It's about health. It's about responsibility. It's about also your healing gift. So it has many different facets with it. So the six, definitely they need healing. And uh, from, from the perspective, they need to cut everything. They need to remove, unplug everything, whatever holding them down. So it, it can go into many different directions, depends on the full chart. I cannot, I'm not gonna give you just specific because I need to do the whole chart with that. No, to, and this to see is... if, you, if it's a strongly damaging six or two you have, or you have it somewhere else in the chart. So that's where, um, so basically th this is where you're learning lessons in life gonna be around family and relationships. Mm -hmm. So you Boundaries. might have some problem, you know, you might have a problem around those. This is where your learning experience needs to shape up in order to bring Lindsay to where she wants to be. That's beautiful um, and, and very, 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 very true. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't started yet, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think as far as the boundaries go and, and get climbing out of the back seat, I think that I've moved through past that phase of my life. That, that's good, but you need to, to be reminded of it for mm -hmm. the instance that for you, in case you did or in case you didn't, you need to be aware. Mm -hmm. That's very important. There is um, a lot of power in understanding what the numbers are associated to our avatars, our, our physical beings. It's really wonderful. Um, how, one more thing, because I, I feel like <laughs> you are an example of a very um, authentic, honest healer um would you just give people suggestions because i know that a lot you, of my you, listeners you, you cut i didn't hear all of your questions um you you cut you seem to me to be a very um authentic honest healer and i wonder what suggestions you would have because i know that a lot of my listeners are going out and looking for people like you to bring into their lives to kind of help them um but, and, and give them some guidance but there's a lot of shysters in the world Oh, there's plenty of those. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of those. What advice would you give to people who are looking for honest people to help them? Don't go for the fluff. Mm -hmm. Don't go for the name. Because sometimes they're not the, the right ones for you anyway. Mm -hmm. You're going for the cosmetic outside. I want to be with that group of, you know, but you're part of the whole uh crowd so if if i'm looking for myself the way i look to things i see it either black or white i don't see the middle i don't see the gray side if you are in your black side of life in the dark side of life and i can understand that and i wish you well because you are at least chose which side you want to be on there's nothing wrong with that. If you chose to be in the white light, I can understand and I wish you well there too, because at least you chose. But 80% of humanity are sitting in the gray side. They have one foot in the black and one foot in the white. That's why they're not doing nothing. So they need to find somebody that can move one leg from one side to the other side. Mm -hmm. Not keeping them spreading and trying to stitch, stitch things around to keep them in the middle. They need to take a decision. They wanna be in the black side, stay in the black. I don't have problem with that. If you wanna be in the white light, stay there, doesn't matter. But they need the help to be taken from one side that they wanna be and to the other side. And not just walk the fence. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of 
he, you know, just the fluffy stuff that people are attracted to, most of the time are not the things that they need to be with. Mm -hmm. But they, they will see it on their own later on. That's all it says. Well, if they're out there looking for it, they're going to find it one way or the other. So this is where, where it is. Like for me, what, how I find my people, I find them when I put a special on, on a numerology chart, this is when they're going to see it. So from that, I will, I will know my people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I will take everybody and I will give everybody 150% of the chart for them to understand where they are. But they're not all for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, if, I, if from a thousand people that showed up, I might have only a hundred for me. I might refer them to other people that I, I know that they are for them. But I don't need to do the thousand me. Right. You know what I, you know what I mean? But I can put them in the right place. Mm -hmm. Because I know, like, for example, the ones I'm, I'm training, the people that I'm training, I know what their energies. I know they're, they're a big match for them. So they'll be able to help them more than me even. And how lucky is it that, that um, well, I guess luck isn't the right word, but it's pretty wonderful that you're in a position to be able to teach other people um, because there's a million paths, right? And there's some for them too, you know, so mm -hmm. they need to, to service those people yeah. somewhere or another, you know. Right. And that's where it is. I have two certification programs, one for numerology and one for the meditation I do in the healing work, which I've been doing it for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the meditation one certification is starting uh, very soon. I didn't advertise it to anybody. It's only advertised to my students mm -hmm. because I don't want to take people from outside. I never tried the meditation. They've never been into the a program that teaches that meditation. You know, they did experiment it. It's not like it's a theory program. It's not a theory, it's a practical. Mm -hmm. You already went through it yourself. You know, so I mm -hmm. have very, uh, a good audience for it because they already been uh, doing this type of work and they like what they've seen as a result for themselves. And they have the motivation to go out and help other people with the, that same modality. Yeah. Trust your intuition, the voice in you that tell you don't go there. Mm -hmm. That's all. Or what about that voice that says, "Oh, this is it. This is the one that you you need to pay attention to this right now." Choice. How mm -hmm. to take the choice? Look, everything has been put in front of us. Mm -hmm. Like for me, if somebody wants to find me, they can Google me. They can find me. Mm -hmm. They can go on Facebook. They can search me they can you know it's not like it's hard to find as long as you spell the name properly that's all <laughs> that's all you have to do that's so, true uh, otherwise then who cares yeah find it's hard to to do anything it's it's available to everyone so and who does this the right searching they'll find the right answers mm -hmm. that's all it is that's great will you come on the podcast again like midway through 2021 so we can talk about the crazy events of the year what's that no problem wonderful wonderful all right joseph right have thank a good so have a good day <laughs> yes you Lindsay. too thank you so much we'll talk thank to you, you for soon having me. yes thank Bye. you for being here Bye-bye. Oh, my pleasure. Bye. Bye-bye.